Hey guys, this is D Flash, and I'm back with another video about our Ableton Live devices. This week we're going to take a look at the compressor and how we can use it on our master channel and on our tracks. So let's drag it into our track or into our master channel and take a look at how we can use it. So what we've got is the way that the compressor works is it takes the incoming audio and it reduces the peaks so that it's closer to the dips of the track and what that does is it gives us more headroom headroom to increase the audio um, on the master or even on the channel and gives you it reduces the dynamic range but allows you to make the track overall sound louder now that can be a good thing if you're if that's what you're looking to do but in the same sense you want to be very careful not to remove all dynamic range from your track which will remove some of the drama from your track or the tension so let's take a look at how we can use the compressor and what each parameter does so I'm going to play a track from my live set and we'll take a look at it Okay. So we've got the audio coming in, and we can address, adjust the threshold, which controls when the compressor kicks in. We're going to turn off the makeup gain. What the makeup gain does is it increases the audio as you lower the threshold, increases the output audio. So it can make up for the reduction in gain, but it's not as accurate as I would like, so I prefer to just manually adjust the output audio. So right now we've got the threshold around, we'll set it to negative 26. Now what's going on is it's any audio that's above negative 26 gets reduced in volume. Right now it, the ratio is set to 2 to 1. So any audio that's above the threshold is reduced a half. So if the audio is at negative 6, or is 6 decibels above the threshold, it reduces it by three decibels and you can see what's happening with the by looking at the gain reduction the gain reduction shows us how much of the gain is being reduced and this graph just shows us what our compressor settings are set to so our threshold is that little notch or the corner and the ratio is the ramp past the threshold reduce this back down to negative 26 and what the knee does is it just rounds out the threshold so right around here it's it's not just it's not just an on off instead it's a gradual reduction once it kicks into the full reduction our model controls the type of compressor we have the feed forward which looks at the audio ahead of it and that's how it kicks in that's more accurate and it it really depends on what you prefer the sound to be like but I, I prefer either feed forward one or two feedback what that does is it looks at the audio after it's been going after it's gone through the compressor and that's when it kicks in the gain reduction so that is more it models after the more analog compressors so if that's the type of sound you're looking to do then that's what you would want to use but if you're looking for looking for something that's kind of accurate and kicks in right when the it, it processes the audio right when it reaches it this is what you'd want what you can do is adjust the track the attack and the attack controls when how fast the gain reduction is activated on a master channel you want it a little higher so we'll set it to 60 milliseconds and we'll jump to another part of the track so we'll have that a little higher because what that does is it actually smooths out the gain reduction if you have it really low you see that it's just adjusting the volume constantly and you can kind of hear it and it's not a pleasant sound especially on your 
master channel. You don't want that. You want it to be kind of smooth. So it's reducing the sound slowly. Then what you want to do is adjust the release. The release is the complete opposite of the attack. The attack is how fast it, the gain reduction starts and the release is how fast or slow it releases or stops reducing the gain. So you want that a little higher. Let's leave it around there. So now you can see that's kind of a slow and constant gain reduction. We can bring it down, bring down the threshold a little bit more. Alright, so now what we'll do is go to a quieter part of the track and you'll hear how the volume doesn't change as dramatically. I'm just going to increase the output gain. And let's turn it off. Okay. What we'll do is we'll adjust the utility on the track so we can hear the difference without it just being an increase in volume because of the compressor's output. So when we turn it on, and you can see how the audio is staying around the seam. We'll reset this. So the audio on the master channel is just staying around three, negative three. And then when we kick in a louder part of the track, You see that it only increased in volume by a little bit. And if we turn it off, all right. So we've got the gain reduction kicking in a little more, so that the compressor is really controlling the volume. Okay. So this is with it off. This is with it on. You can hear how the kick becomes a bit more punchy and the hi-hats start to peek out. We'll reduce the utility a bit. Alright. So, the overall volume isn't changing much. We've got negative three, negative two, so you see how the volume's not changing but pieces of the track are actually kind of peeking out a bit more now. And that's really what the compressor does, is it just increases the, decreases the peaks so that we can increase the output without clipping our master. Now what our envelopes do is they actually control how the compressor is, is controlled by the audio. So if we have it set to peak, that means exactly that. It looks at the peaks of the audio and just from there decides when to kick in the gain reduction. RMS, what that does is it looks at pretty much an average of the audio and adjusts itself based on that. So it's a little more accurate um, when you're putting it on like a master channel and that will, um, because what it does is it looks at audio over a longer period of time and then decides when to kick in. So it just, it's not just based on a snare. It's based on a large range of the, a larger range of the audio. And then Opto uses, it, it actually um, has a longer release time. So I actually prefer to use that on a master channel because that's gonna give us um, a gentler curve. down the, gain, the threshold a little more. Alright, so this is with off. And you hear how the 303 kind of disappears. And now we bring it back and it's right there. And you see how we're not really going over into the red on here. We're still at negative one. 
Now the other controls that the compressor has is if we open up this panel, this opens up the sidechain panel. But the one thing that I just realized is that the EQ controls We're going to just stop the audio for a second, so I'm not yelling. Alright, so we'll just bring it down a little bit. Okay, so the EQ controls don't just control if you have sidechain turned on. They control the audio, com the audio coming into the compressor. So this is, if we have it turned on, this audio is what's controlling the compressor. So maybe we m might just want um, maybe we don't want the kick really con being considered part of the audio so that it doesn't kick on the compressor just the highs do or the other way around we want the kick to cause the audio to pump but we don't want maybe a high clap or something like that or um, a loud rise to make the compressor kick in. We just want the kick. So we could EQ the audio that's controlling the compressor. And this just lets us preview it. Our other option is to turn on sidechain. And what sidechain does is we can actually set another piece of audio to control the compressor. The most common use is to use the kick. So you see here on our preview that we're hearing the kick. Okay, so we've got the kick going. And what that's doing is it's causing the gain reduction to kick in just when it hears the kick. So if we turn that on, if we turn off the preview, we're going to hear the audio and you're going to hear it pumping based on whenever the kick comes in. Now you don't usually want this on your master channel, but you may want that on like a rise. So we'll put it over here, and we've got this rise, and we've got the kick going, and we'll lower the attack so it's really punching in whenever the kick comes on. We'll raise this so it's a bit more dramatic. We'll bring the kick up so that it's right around zero bring this up so okay so now when we kick in this rise you're gonna hear really pumping based on the kick So that's what the side chain is used for. Now we can also use a compressor. I just showed you how to use it on our master channel, but we could also use it on our drums to give it a punchier sound. So what we could do is group these up. And drag it on the group. I'm going to reset everything. leave it on peak, we'll raise the attack a bit, we'll set it to the default, we'll set the release to default, we'll bring our ratio down about 1.8, alright so now we've got our threshold, we're going to bring that down, and bring our overall audio up just so we can hear what we're doing. We'll even solo this. There we go. So here's with it off. So you can see how we're going into the red, and it's kind of a this loop doesn't.
doesn't really work well for this. Here, we'll try this one. Okay, so we're going to bring this down. Alright. So it's peeking up into the red. So what we'll do is we'll kick this on. We'll hide the side chain panel because we don't need it. Alright, so when we bring the threshold down, you'll see that the overall volume is reduced. And now we've got the gain reduction kicking in. So now what we can do is we can increase the volume of the drums back up to be around zero. So here's with it off. So you can just hear how the kick becomes a bit more punchy. Uh, Let's see the snare. Yeah, that little... This part becomes a little more pronounced once it's compressed. And that's pretty much the compressor. Uh, there's not much more to really go through other than just saying, you know, practice with it because the more you get to know it the more you'll know where it works and where it doesn't. We'll just try one more drum track. Okay, so you can hear how the kick punches a little higher than everything else. So when we compress it, it brings everything a little more in line. Allows the, kick, the snare to be a little louder allows this little percussion part to peek through. Alright, so that's, again that's a compressor and uh, if you have any comments or questions or even some tips on how to use the compressor better, I'm still kind of learning more about it and more ways to use it. Uh, definitely leave a comment in the, in the comment section or send me an email and make sure you subscribe to check out the next video we're going to be going through the dynamic tube and different types of audio we can use it on so thanks for checking it out and i uh, look forward to seeing your comments thanks Bye.